Welcome to the Adventure Island podcast hosted by Ballyhass, a podcast where we dive into this week's outdoor news, look at why we should all be getting active outdoors, providing inspiration for outdoor adventures, travel destinations, fringe outdoor sports and local destinations and characters. This podcast is released every Friday following our newsletter on Thursday. Please sign up with the link below on all our podcast providers. I think we are live on our first ever podcast. How are you doing, everyone? Uh, my name is Owen McCarthy, uh, coming to you from Ballyhass Adventure Group. I'm joined here with Paul McCabe. So it's our it's our first uh, foray into podcasting. Uh, so it's the Adventure Island podcast. Um, it's basically um, everything to do with the outdoors. Uh, we both work for a company, Ballyhass Adventure Group, uh, that are uh we do and we're an outdoor company with a couple of different activity centers in cork so we have a goal to get everyone active outdoors and that got myself and paul thinking what more can we do to spread awareness um to give advice to give inspiration um of how you can get more active outdoors and hence this podcast we do have a weekly newsletter that goes out every thursday as well we have a couple of thousand readers on that um so definitely for the first few weeks weeks while we find our feet we're going to um we're, we're kind of going to base ourselves off off that um off that newsletter in the newsletter we have what we're watching each week what we're reading general outdoor news um and loads of other stuff as well little little bits uh, little bits and pieces about what we're doing at Ballyhas. but mainly as i said we're trying to get people active outdoors if you have an interest in the outdoors or you're looking for inspiration we hope this would be a really nice tool for you um, but obviously, as I said, I'm Owen McCarthy. Um, I, Paul uh, is joined here as well, Paul McCabe. So on our first, just in the first couple of, if for the first week, uh, we were just going to introduce ourselves, give us a little bit of background on our own, I guess, outdoor experience, probably travel experience for both of us, Paul, I'd imagine. Um, and we're also in this week, we kind of what we have planned for this week is we're going to go into a little bit about there's been a lot of fall to Ireland announcements this week in terms of uh, their plan for the domestic season this year. Obviously, we're coming to you in um, February, February 2021 in the midst of lockdown 3.0. So a bit of outdoor inspiration we're hoping will be uh, will be a good will be a good help for everyone. So we're going to go into that a little bit. Details of our newsletter um, that like there's the, we've got we've got plenty of opinions on that fall darn and we lo- we'd love to kind of hear yours too or what you're thinking about. Um, our must watch there's a couple of really good must watch videos as well. So we'll obviously be putting this up on YouTube and also on SoundCloud and a few other bits and pieces. So if you're if you're joining us on YouTube we'll show a couple of videos in the background and obviously show links and that kind of stuff down below in the description um and then we have a few kind of quick belly house products to do at the end as well but um how are you getting on paul this is, this is a nice day at work isn't it yeah not too bad it's uh it's great to even it's great to get to do something like this um even to talk about the outdoors because sometimes even there we're, when we get uh, embroiled in our work so to speak you know where um we we're talking uh, about you know the exciting products aspects we have down at Ballyhas, but it's nice even to go a little bit outside of the Ballyhas bubble, even sort of speak and talk a little bit more about the outdoors and, you know, in Ireland and kind of the, even the staycation period and talking a little bit about that now coming up to well, the summer. So, yeah, that, well, that was such a prime thing to talk about this week, wasn't it? I, I, like, I mean, you, I guess listening, you might not have heard much about it yet, but it was a big industry launch. So there was a lot of stuff between the providers and that kind of stuff. But before we go into that, like, like you've been with Ballyhas for a year and like I, I totally agree it's just like I mean this is more we we talk to talk or we talk to talk a lot in terms of getting active outdoors but this is kind of I guess us walking the walk a little bit um showing our own experience and also um trying to trying to give more experience not not really to do with Ballyhas but in general and that's why we're calling it Adventure Island the Irish Adventure Island um I know from my travel experiences you see the the amazing like landscapes the amazing access we have to the outdoors in Ireland and it was it was only when I went away from Ireland and came back that I really that I really honed in on going wow like we have such an amazing country um to get to get into and I did a lot of a lot of traveling in that sense but so did you right you you, you you've done quite a bit yeah, absolutely. Even before I um, even jo- before I joined Ballyhas, I did um, a good bit of Europe in 2018, 19, 
um, did uh, went to South Africa. Um, I was in Japan and then I finished up actually in New Zealand um, for their summer period in 2019, 2020. So um, I've seen a lot there as well, like around the, um, the world and getting that, you know, I think the first thing we always want to do when we start, start traveling is what can we do outside the country? And I suppose the, even though in the kind of the midst of the pandemic, we've been, you know, we've, uh, we've got a, a chance to rediscover kind of where we live and, you know, Ireland. And, you know, like I always see a lot of travelers putting up, like, you know, they talk about the big locations, like your Iceland's, your New Zealand's, your, you know, but Ireland is always well talked about in the international travel community. So sometimes we, uh, we might not appreciate kind of what's on our doorstep, so to speak. And, you know, I think last summer gave people the opportunity to do that with the staycation period and, you know, even just getting outdoors, you know, a lot more and, you know, enjoying even the fine Irish weather because we had a very good summer last year, you know, in terms of the weather and in terms of kind of um, the, you know, the you know the, the 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 june july august kind of uh, period where people did the majority of them kind of getting out going to Kerry, going to cork going to clare going to donegal and even some people going down and done i've seen a lot of people doing glen de Lock and the wicklow mountains so some of those were great like uh um you know people seen it for the first time ever like parts of ireland that they were like wow i didn't even know how beautiful this place was you know well, I like I definitely had said it, it definitely in internal communications, and I've said it like a few other times in presentations I've given that uh, last year really highlighted the importance of the outdoors. Like when we got into that first lockdown and those initial weeks, and there was not far off panic, you know what I mean, in terms of what people were doing. They rushed the outdoor hotspots, you know, and like on, to their detriment or to the the area's detriment, if you like, in terms of like it was flooded, it was like they, it couldn't handle anymore, you know. Um, and that was interesting to me because that spoke of a how important the outdoors is to people like you know when when you take it away from them then you see it's like oh I want to get outdoors but like how often were they getting outdoors prior to that in their normal hectic lives and traveling and commuting to work mm -hmm. and you know how often were they accessing the outdoors mm -hmm. and then also everyone went to the same places you know I know these same places granted are beautiful like you know you've got your bally bunions and your your garrett's towns and your other kind of hot spots in in, in the local and i'm obviously talking cork here uh, but the, the same was all the way up the wild atlantic way the same way in dublin's in the tribadens and the the, the forest and and the, and the mountains up there and still is is having that issues it reeked to me that there was a bit of a lack of education about you know why yes these are beautiful but there's you probably passed 20 other locations on route there and why aren't people taking advantage and that got me again look working in an adventure company to go like whoa there's a there's a disconnect you know there's a disconnect between um like people's education and knowledge of the outdoor areas in ireland again so health hence our adventure island because i think there is so much adventure there you know mm -hmm. um did you find that like would you kind of agree with that or do you, do you think that people are are capable of 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 getting outdoors and exploring uh yeah i i'd actually really agree with that and i'll give you a really good example like we when we before kind of the restrictions came into play we would have um you know myself and even Aoife we would have went out and we would have done a lot of walking around cork and um like one of the things like we were saying is like oh we'll go to the the usuals you know we'll go down to Myrtle Beach or we'll go down to you know even Nahoval Cove or um we'll go down to uh kind of the common ones you know you had your Carica line and um these places but you know what I couldn't believe is even one thing I discovered and it, it was kind of from the commuting going up from uh, Ballyhas Coachford to Ballyhas Mallow was the beauty of North Cork and actually the beauty of say the Bogger Mountains you know you know you have your Mount Hillary there you had your Mush and Moor there and I couldn't get over that I was like you know no one told me about any of these places you know and it was only kind of of my outdoor instinct that I decided geez uh, you know actually uh, do hollow way there might give that a go and um, see what that's like and do some of the walks around there and i've kind of opened the world to myself in the north cork because there's so much to do within the 
Halla Way or, you know, the Bogger Mountains, you know, I was like, wow, this is like something that I couldn't believe, you know, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, that wasn't there, you know. I, th- I think, I think we're, you know, an issue with that or, or again, I, it's, I don't know how founded in fact it is, but it's, it's definitely an access issue and and the facilities aren't quite there you know i i know you and you did if you've done a bit of travel in europe they seem so better set up to utilize their natural environs you know um that that, uh you know i remember talking to someone i hadn't done it myself but he went hiking i think it was in switzerland or or one of the main hiking areas uh, in, in the alps there and the pathways and the signage and the car parking, you know, the core facilities were there. I so much so that he was walking down a path and like they literally had a half a kilometer of bark mulch or soft things to kind of ease your way out of the mountains, you know, mm. to that extent that they had, they were thinking about, oh, you're going to have sore feet at this point. So mm. as you're walking out, let's make it a little bit nicer for the walkers, like, you know, whereas in Ireland, in the Bogares, I'm sure you're were, you were clambering through a farmer's gate um, yeah. and, you know, parking on the side of the road, blocking it for other people. You had all these extra considerations that, like, if you have a small family or if you're, you know, like, I mean, if you have a, uh, some sort of access problem or, or disability mm-hmm. problem or, or, you know what I mean, in terms of if, if yeah. you have to figure all these things out for yourself and it's not now. And again, I don't want to sound because there's great tools there's the the trails.ie and these kind of ones are really yeah. coming true i know bally howers are doing a great job in terms of of highlighting the walks and doing videos to 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 do this so it is a known issue and they are getting there but hopefully that's something we can do with the podcast is maybe do a segment if if people would like it on a kind of a, a hidden gem or or something on your doorstep that you might not know is there yeah. um because but i think I, for yeah. this podcast day we like we're we're in we're in lockdown 3.0 i think it's getting to people the weather isn't great it's in winter and that's what got us through lockdown 1.0 was being able to get outdoors you can't do that every day um even though i consider i'd still sh- say you should in whatever way you can put on that raincoat put on the wellies get out because it will help you more than ever um let's try and see what kind of inspiration we can give for the next couple of weeks and kind of go i definitely want to do so just to briefly go through my travel background i finished college oh jesus 10 years ago now 12 years ago 13 years ago probably um maybe even 15 years ago let's not let's not go into too much dates there in that one uh but uh after that i did the kind of australia thing spent three or four months in asia traveling through so did all southeast asia thailand vietnam cambodia Laos. um did a bit of indonesia on the way down hit bali into australia did a full year in Australia where I did a bit of work but more travel circum circumnavigate circumnavigated the whole the whole island which is plenty of stories there for for a future date <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did New Zealand Japan on my way back and kind of since then since 10 plus years working in Bali Haas as well um, I've always kind of tried to take a chunk of time in the winter in our down period and maybe take anywhere between three and six weeks to do other areas of which I've done Nepal, South America, and a few other, uh, Japan, a few other places like that as well. So um, that's where my my enthusiasm has come from is travel abroad. Like you said, you know, you travel abroad and, you know, people get excited when they hear you're from Ireland and want to know more about it. And you, you kind of almost stutter going, oh, Jesus, yeah, well, I haven't spent, I haven't been to Donegal, you know? And I'm like, oh, but I really want to go, you know? Like I've, I've yeah. been to every corner of the world and I haven't been to one of the corners of Ireland, which I will be my staycation recommendation anyway for this year, I'd imagine. Um, yeah. So let's try and do that. Like, I mean, we could, we, we'll, we'll get back into where we are coming from. It's a, it's a cabin man and a cork man muddling their way through the outdoor industry in Ireland. So <laughs> let's, see, <laughs> let's see how we can do. Um, yeah, but look, number one of mine was, was Fault Ireland's announcements this week. Uh, for those that don't know, um, like so there was big industry announcement it was uh, the, the, the event was called survive to thrive um and it was obviously a huge online event uh, uh but it was attended by five thousand plus um uh industry stakeholders from hoteliers to to wow. to activity to activity providers to like there was a big a big attendance and it was really well done it was apple-esque you know where they were zooming mm. between people and showing videos and fall to ireland to be fair to them really pulled it out of the bag really looked good really adapted to be able to work remotely so i thought that was really impressive 
Um, and they're obviously highlighting supports that are bringing in. There was big budgets, you know, sure. How, like what did the Minister of Tourism, gosh, was it 40 or 100 million or something? Or like there yeah, was some big, was there was some big, there was a big number gone towards tourism in the, in the recent budget. And so they've obviously sorted that out and, and figured out all their supports, which look are, are going to be badly needed. Um, especially like we, we know from being activity providers and stuff, how, how hard you can be hit. Um, and it's going and to be such a short season as well. Like for exactly. it could it could be the potential of such a short season yep. for a lot of these uh, a lot of these outdoor and um, tourist companies. You know, so that they it's great to get that support where they feel that you know if we are hopefully not to go into another lockdown or a very restrictive period that they feel that the support is hopefully there for them. You know that you know because it is going to be very difficult. I think. Um, you know, for, for everyone kind of this year, you know, that, you know, uh, it'll be difficult period for them if we are to have, a, with a, you know, any type of restrictive period, you know, throughout 2021, you know? Yeah, and and this, I'm going to get into this now in a second. So, so they're like, so the big, their big push is staycations, obviously love it or load that. And I don't know there's plenty of people that load that term, especially that it's completely overdone from last year in that, that, that July, August period, but it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's never been more clear that this, we will be staying at home this year. And, and the, in, I, what I found really interesting in, in that, uh, in that announcement was we're targeting staycation, but not only are they targeting staycations, they're char- they, they want everybody to go on multiple staycations. And I was like, well, look, Again, that makes sense. But when they're when they're diving down that deep into it to go like multiple, we want people to be taking multiple short breaks in Ireland. Like that, I, I guess that's a result of our our, of our small population. Um, and yeah, like, of course, the, like when we talk attractions, there's so many inbound providers that they're they have been completely decimated. Like their whole business models are based on like foreign tours coming in high value tours um bus tours um but other 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 outdoor providers even are are just their their price modeling their price points are all skewed towards you know like package tours and stuff that you're packaging in higher costs and this kind of stuff so really odd but the 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 multiple staycation do you see yourself taking multiple staycation you're you're a good man for getting away and that kind of stuff i'd imagine that's, that's normal for you is it yeah like i did like even last summer like um Actually, I, I kind of given the background of it when I was away in New Zealand, I knew it was only going to be a few months there. So every weekend um, I packed it with some sort of activity or some sort of thing to do in the outdoors. And I, I kind of I brought that when I came home as well. Like, I don't know that kind of, you know, if you're if you have a weekend, use it. If you have two days, use it. So last summer I tried to kind of I kind of went a bit too staycation mad. So um, I kind of uh, I booked I was in um, Kerry when and I never did Kerry and never did uh, the Ring of Kerry or Torque Mountain or Clarny. It was the first time I was ever sure. there. Jesus, so. Jesus, Paul, why would you ever leave Cabin, huh? Yeah, no. So it was. <laughs> It was it was brilliant, like, and you know, I I did I did Kerry, and then we did we went. Uh, I never did Clare, like all these places, like, um, that I never even touched. And then I did Galway, but I was in Galway before uh, for kind of a family sort of uh, staycations when they weren't called staycations before. So uh, seeing Kyle Morabi and Connemara, but like even in those few staycations that I did do on the weekends that I was able to get off, I think one of the most things that was completely blown away was when I went back up to Cavan. Um, and it's part, it's kind of part of the fault of Ireland that gets a little bit forgotten about behind Ireland's ancient East and wide Atlantic way is Ireland's hidden heartlands. And um, we went up and I live um, uh, beside a lake called Loch Sheelan. And um, we did a bit of camping there um, during the summer and when we had the good weather. And I was nearly blown a little bit back by it. I, got, I suppose I got a little bit emotional about it because I was thinking like this lake, it, you know, it was a boom of tourism when the fishing was popular in the 1960s. But I was like, like, you know, you feel like you were in a foreign country. You were like, you know, now I'm beginning to appreciate what I have, we what we have at the front door, you know, uh, even though I did the popular staycations, it's going back what you said, I did something that was outside my doorstep, which is not a popular place really to go to and right and realize, holy God, this place is unbelievable. Like it's just amazing even just being able to go out in the kayaks there, the lovely flat water, you know, it's not a mountainous region. So it's very flat land when you're looking at it, you're just seeing, you know, sky completely you know 
20, 30 kilometers, just fantastic. And I think that was uh, something that I really, really enjoyed, you know, from a well, like, uh, well, hold, point. Hold, hold, hold that thought for a second. So, mm. like, I, I, so my takeaway, so from this event, right, were um, multiple, so multiple staycations. I think that's going to be a big ask on people. Um, it's, yeah. well, not, a, not a big ask, but, you know, it's, it's maybe a bit aspirational. Like, and I mean, even, even, like what what are what's their thought process on that you know what i mean it is you know three two night stays better than a week-long stay i'm not you know or do they want a week-long stay plus month? i don't know quite what they're thinking on that one mm, but my, I, my big fear right and and this is where i'm getting to and i actually mentioned it in the newsletter that we sent out through ballyhas this this week on thursday um that the commentary that came back and I think I was listening to it on the radio and they were they were highlighting they were going over this event um, and it was uh, they were talking to a provider and they were the provider was yeah great event great support coming through badly needed for the industry um, like it was all kind of positive and then it was just it was a radio call in show so they 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 had the listeners call in or they were texting in and he was just reading out the feedback that the radio DJ was and it was all quite negative uh, going how do you expect us to take multiple staycations? It's too expensive. We went here. It's an absolute ripoff. People like, like you know, self-caterings are charging 1600 for seven days. How am I supposed to afford that? How am I supposed to do this? I can get like two weeks for the same price in, in, in Spain, all inclusive. And yet this is like a, a, a cottage in, in, in rural Ireland or whatever it was. And I mean, that got me worried. It was that commentary after that got me thinking about this whole season, right? You know, um, and we we briefly touched on it, you know, but like, I'm worried. I'm worried, right? Because, well, I'm optimistic and I'm hopeful, but I'm also worried about this whole season coming up because I think we, we could potentially have a storm in a teacup here. Mm-hmm. Um, let's look at the positives for the moment. Like, right, everyone's cooped up. We know everyone wants to get outdoors. We know everyone wants to explore what's on their doorstep. We want them to get out, outdoors. And we know they're, 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 I don't want to say the word stuck here, but for all intents and purposes, they're on the island. They can't go anywhere else. Um, we have an opportunity as outdoor providers, as, as, as hoteliers, as anyone in, in the tourism industry to showcase exactly what we're talking about, our adventure island in terms of like what we can offer, what's going, what's available out there, um, looking close, everything we're talking about here and now in a positive way. If that happened right, if every staycation that went on, they got a good experience, discovered something new, got more active, brought their families, reconnected, had that emotion. And I, I'm going to show the video here now in a second, especially for, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, you, you'll see it in a second because it's really good quality emotive marketing from Fall to Ireland, which I really like. Um, and like, well, we won't be able to sh- share the sound because we'll get caught out on YouTube, but like there's some really nice touches and it's a mo- like this, this video in particular finishes with a group of friends around a campfire and they're just sh- shooting the shit basically and, and having a laugh and, you know, everything we miss and we don't, we don't know that we're, we're not getting these days. Um, so like, imagine all of that went well, every staycation went, we would have 4 million, 6 million, how many is in the country at the moment, then going off and follow foreign holidays, but going, it doesn't compare, like our holidays in, our, in home are unbelievable, they're the best experience, they're the best at everything we do, the only reason people might go abroad is because they're so busy, that's a perfect outcome of this, we, we, we get 4, 6 million, um, like absolute champions of the outdoors, leaving the island or on the island, leaving the island, whatever. That's my ultimate outcome. But looking at that commentary, what's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is people get ripped off. They spend too much money. They don't have good experiences. Things are too busy. They don't have the facilities in place. They can't get to the areas they want to. Then where are we? Then we have four to six million people. And you're not going to have, I'm I'm using exaggerating here to, to the top, but like imagine if that happens, that is people... Irish people going, don't go holiday in Ireland. Jesus, no, I went there. I went there. I went there last year and this kind of stuff. And I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. That is my nightmare because it could happen. And when I say storm in a teacup, it all comes back to again. What we're talking about is that providers have been in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, like, why wouldn't they be? And they're in 
desperate situations where they're going to see a full roster coming through to them who, who are going to pay through the roof potentially, like, you know what I mean? Um, and they, they, they probably will be able to up their price, but like if they're up in their price, I just so hope they up their value. You know what I mean? Like, you you know, we are at Bally Hats. We, we've thought about this and we're offering discount passes to try and balance the uh, the, the value to, to what we're offering. And it's difficult. We know firsthand how hard it is. But I'm worried. I'm worried about it. You know I, I, mean? I don't know I, which way it's going to go. Or had you, had you thought about that? Or Yeah, like, I'd like to... I, I'm quite optimistic about it because I think now... You know, when Fault of Ireland came out with this multiple staycation um, kind of um, statement, I think it's going to bring a competitive edge to, you know, to a lot of the outdoor uh, tourist, uh, tourist companies at the moment, because we see even the rise of Airbnb there, you know, offering the cheap alternative, you know, to the staycation. You know, some people, I remember a good few of those coming up in Galway, you know, that people are paying four or five hundred euros for a room per night for their family where you could pay four or five hundred euros for a week in Spain so they they were massive I remember massive kind of uh, comparisons but I think the fact that Airbnb now has become such a strong kind of foothold on accommodation and accommodation it always boils down really to accommodation it's the first experience that people you know get when they go on their staycations or going on their holidays and I think you know the fact that the hotels and even the Fulch Ireland companies, you know, and even in, in accommodation know that, you know, the Airbnb is going to be a huge competitor this year, that they're going to have to lower their prices to kind of make any competition out of it because people just won't spend the four or 500 euros. And um, it's a bit like uh, the Ryanair effect, you know, when Ryanair first came into Europe, you know, we were charged two, 300 euros for a weekend in London you know and then when the any not only Ryanair EasyJet any of the low-cost airlines come in you know all those other top airlines start to bring down their prices so I'm kind of optimistic to hope that maybe that will be the same in Ireland and but then you know you did mention the value and it's important that the value gets you know um gets across too because no one wants to go on a staycation even though it's cheap and then still have a bad time because the product quality wasn't there or some the quality of the you know whatever they did wasn't there you know we i think we could talk about airbnb and the effect it has on industry that's a whole other topic because i i definitely have i know some colleagues in the industry that like it, it has so many adverse effects even say for for hotels in small in small um in small rural seasonal yeah. towns, they can't get their staff in because there's no accommodation because why would they rent out to a three month let when they can rent out weekly at your, at your Airbnb rates, you know? Mm. So it's, it's, it's like, that has a big knock on effect. Um, uh, but, but you're, you know, you're right. Like in, in, in terms of there are so much offerings there. My, the other thing on the Airbnb, actually, I know I was, I was trying to get to something there is that it's unregulated in one sense. Yeah. They're not part of the tourism industries. They may not even know about these plans. So it's, it's an interesting, is there two opposing forces there that could cause hassle as well? Like, there's, you know, there's definitely, and there, this is what um, I, I remember up at, um, the one of the uh, a holiday I think it was it was one of those holidays up in the RDS you know and then holiday shows they do the stalls and the different travel companies and I remember when the hotel board were there in Fulch Ireland were giving a presentation they did say Airbnb is an unregulated company it's not a technically kind of not a tourist company you know because it's not providing so if you're looking at taxation that the you know that the uh, hotels would have you know airbnb don't have them so it is kind of a controversial you know way of promoting staycations and um, in a way because you know are you know there is this aspect are you giving back to you know say the uh, the irish tourism are you giving back to it you know some will argue that you are because you know you're you know you're paying the provider whoever it is and they're probably going to go on their holidays and use that money and then the other aspect is that they're not you know if you stay in a hotel whatever tax is going to towards the tourism so there is that controversial you know usage of it um it's interesting in ireland I know abroad in Europe, Airbnb have a lot more kind of involvement in terms of, you know, you know, cases with tourism boards in Europe, where in Ireland it hasn't really been discovered. Airbnb is probably not as big in Ireland as it is in a lot of other European countries. 
Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, that was my takeaways from this event anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, there's, there's, there's a host of different issues that we'd be some solving, but I dearly hope that uh, this turns out for, that we take the opportunity, the golden opportunity that we have this year as an Irish tourism industry. You know, and I, it was interesting to hear in that event as well that, you know, Dublin, like, so they, you, you mentioned the four key areas, but then obviously there's Dublin, Visit Dublin is, the, is, is another one that's, that is used as, the cosmopolitan or the, the the urban area one and dublin are really concentrating on dublin people you know and i know that sounds that of course but that makes sense is to get the locals into the tourist attractions and i mean they probably walked past the tiny museum and the guinness storehouse and whatever host of other attractions there are up there on how many different occasions but how often have they actually used them mm-hmm. so again it, it it becomes you know you you have those guys and are they in the, the, the luminous jackets in, in as in volunteer tourist people um, in big tourist cities that they, they volunteer to just be that source of information, that local guide of people are and they hang about the streets and they're like uh, the, the tourist destinations answering questions. But imagine if we get this right and Ireland actually experiences tourism Ireland this year. We'll have every person on that street could be potentially to stop that tourist when they come back and go, go to this place and go to that place. Like, but we have to get it right. They have to make, create the value, get them in. Um, and like, oh, well, look, I mean, we could talk about it for ages. I'm going to share it here now for the guys, um, for especially particularly for the guys on, uh, actually, I'll go to this one. Um, so again, it's going to be playing there in the background. Oh, hold on. I haven't quite shared it yet. Um, so I think, yeah, so I think it's up there now. So it's kind of, it's a really cool video. Um, like, I mean, it just gives you a glimpse, you know, of Jeep with surfboards on it, like r- driving into the mountains beside the, beside the water, showing the outdoor activities, which we love to see, Paula, um, yeah. and highlighting from Donegal, probably back down Mead, all these areas and like looks really cool again so like so focused on the outdoors paddle boarding and right in the city center all your aquariums i think it's just so cool you know um and again look eating by a fire oh man like how how much are we gonna enjoy that when we get back to it so i think they've hit the, they've hit it on the mark you know and i i, I think that's why i want to kind of finish on it because it's a good thing, but we have to be aware. We have such a beautiful opportunity. And there, that's the fire scene that I was, and you like, go on, we'll have the link in the description below because it's worth a little look. And they, they I think all the videos finish off with, um, with the case of, uh, um, I can't stop sharing. That was another thing. Um, with a case of basically, um, hang on a second here now, if I can stop sharing. I think I'm back there now. I have to get out yeah, of there now. Yeah. Um, they basically, yeah. So they had to, um, they, they finish off with a little kind of voiceover and that kind of stuff. And it really captures the moment is all I'm kind of trying to say. I think like it, it's just that kind of emotive feel that that travel, that outdoors, and especially mm-hmm. this adventure island is, yeah. uh, is, is what really kind of encapsulated. So really yeah. cool. No, I like um, it. just in the last point of that as well, like, you know, you, you, that, video even there you've seen some like i know i know wexford's popular there in eastern ireland and then even mead was mentioned you know and I, i'm very close to mead and you know there is those outdoor areas that are not as well known that just can provide beautiful landscapes and i just thought they did that really really well cool um so like, I, it would be interesting to watch we'll definitely come back to that in future in future in future episodes for sure um so I wanted to give like kind of maybe a little bit of an inspiration kind of segment if you, if you want in terms of the outdoors and stuff. And this is something we definitely do in the newsletter on, on the Thursdays. Um, so the link to sign up to that again will be in the description. This one, I don't know if anyone's heard. Had you seen this Danny McGaskill uh, before, Paul, or had, had you come across him as a mountain biker? No, I haven't actually. And um, actually mountain, I wouldn't follow too much on mountain biking. I've, seen a couple I've, I've done a couple of i haven't done them myself but I've, I've walked a lot of mountain bike trails and stuff so i wouldn't know them now myself so like i'm not a mountain biker either and this is this this is why i think that we're maybe two good guys to do this because we're i'm not in like i do the wakeboarding here in ballyhouse quite a lot that would be my main thing is water sports i do i guess scuba diving quite a lot um i'm getting into paddle boarding 
but I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a complete outdoor head either. Like, you know what I mean? I love being outdoors, but I wouldn't say I'm that guy that is completely adventure joy either, you know? Um, but I've come across this guy before and I was excited to see him release a new video. He's a Red Bull athlete um, and he's a mountain biker. But like, again, I'm not over for, familiar. I bet there'll be, if there's people in the industry going, oh, look at these donkeys talking about this now. Uh, but he's kind of one of those guys, like he's, he's, he's just the ability. I swear to you, this guy literally like rode a bike out of his delivery room. Like that's what it seems like. He just seems like he literally has just lived on a bike his entire life because it is mountain bike, but he's also one of those, I don't know, is there a term or a thing for it where they're actually jumping from obstacle to obstacle and doing some just bonker stuff. Now I'm going to show him. So this his new one is called the slabs and I might, I might just share it away there actually while we're at, while we're watching here now as well. Um, so like, it's crazy what he does like again like i mean it's really cool because he says he's been inspired by rock climbers and that kind of stuff of how they have projects and it's some of the other material we'll probably get into in the next couple of weeks as well um, and some videos that i've shared that they literally they session they call them projects and it's a route and they have to try and they dedicate years of time trying to get that route in in different disciplines so there's different ways they do it uh but to try and accomplish it and when they get there it's just and they go through so much pain and stuff so danny's been inspired by this right wow. so he basically is climbing you can see it here if you're on youtube again he's basically climbing up a mountain but it's kind of the it's called the slabs and it's obviously it's a place in i don't know is it in england i'm actually not too sure where it is hey, isla sky scotland i think oh, isla sky scotland cool yeah he is mm. scottish so that makes sense mm. um but then he starts cycling down like you you don't even call it a mountain you call it cliff faces and like here he goes here now on it and it's just like you have to watch it because i think the footage as well is just mind-boggling like you know and this guy is going down sheer and you see there he's kind of jumping from one to the other like you know again it's just and like he has some other really cool videos done in gyms and different so he uses his environs really well and and creates these really unique lines and things but it's just his ability on on on, on the bike um and i love the filming in this as well because the drones are just nuts and the drone footage of how it zooms in and tries and captures which would be notoriously hard to capture the actual uh the actual downward or the 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 steepness the steepness of it you know um it just captured my imagination in lockdown this week and i, I definitely wanted to talk about it and share it um and highlight danny mcgaskill because he like this video has as i watch it here now has two million two hundred thousand views and it was only released on on the 28th of january so what four or five days ago so like he is well renowned at doing these showcase kind of videos but like wow Oh, like it's amazing and even there like the uh, uh, one of my bucket lists is definitely when um when uh things go back to some level of normality is uh to go to scotland like and like even see the isle of sky there it's just absolutely beautiful Do you know i've been again it's something we'll, we'll return to but i've been look at that like look like sorry guys he's just coming down the sheer <laughs> cliff face it's it's bonkers um yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely, you know, I've been looking at adventures closer to home. Again, so I, I mentioned that I'm always traveling away and uh, I'm traveling to like the other side of the world. But like now I'm starting to look at like, what can I do close to home? So Scotland, Wales, uh, maybe even Scandinavia being the kind of wish list of, of trying to get to. But I think I'm going to highlight and definitely we will if we do a kind of destination of the week kind of segment or something along those lines of where and highlight those kind of adventures in the next couple of weeks. Um, but again, for everyone, link is in the description. Just do yourself a favor. The video is, I don't know how long it is. It is six minutes long, but you won't regret it. Whether like whatever home office you're in, take five minutes out, pure bit of escapism, just watch it. And like, you will kind of be, well, you'll be watching it with one kind of hand over your face because <laughs> look at like, it's just bonkers what, what he's doing. Um, Next week in our newsletter, actually, um, he's followed up with like how they filmed this. And I actually think that's probably as interesting, if not more interesting to see, you know, they filmed it over a couple of days and just to see them actually climb up to where they are with a bike on their shoulder. Ah, oh, it's class. It's just so cool. Um, and we probably will. We'll probably highlight some of his other projects later on as well, because they're, they're super cool. It's incredible. No, it's uh yeah. It's uh, and like you're right, the Isle of Sky there in the background looks so cool, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's uh, just beautiful landscape and beautiful skill <laughs> as oh, well. Man, it's nuts.
Um, the other one, so like we'll finish. I I won't even I won't even share the last little bit of that because I think you need to go and watch the video, watch the video yourself. But uh, definitely, definitely a real highlight for me since we started the newsletters this year. Um, the other one, then the other last bit of inspiration for today um, that I got hooked on this week um, is the the Winter X Games. Did you see any of it at all, Paul, or had you come across it? No, again, this is something was brand new to me as well. Um, it's something that I didn't come across, so it's uh, no, you know, very good. It's just one of those ones, like, we're, we're calling this, what, the Adventure Island, Ireland, the Adventure Island, technically, like, you know what I mean, to highlight um, our adventures. But sometimes you're almost, you, you, you're looking at it as, as not the lack of adventure, but the, the adventure... The, the missing adventures and obviously winter sports is like something we just don't do because we don't have. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, it's a, it's when these winters, I love the winter Olympics, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, as a sport fan, I can sit down and watch them just because I don't know what's going on, but they capture it really well. The X games is essentially that, but it's like a lot more, I guess it's a bit more, it's, it's, it's extreme games, I think. Um, so it's, it's just that little bit that little bit more extreme and again I, I mentioned that we do the wakeboarding here at Ballyhas so there's a snowboarding element and actually I've never been snowboarding but do a lot of wakeboarding but even the terminology and stuff is quite similar in terms of rotations and flips um, you'd, you'd hear a lot of that kind of stuff going over it you know um, but the reason I'm bringing it up is that like X Games have done a great job at the broadcasting of it um, it's on YouTube Again, we'll share the links and stuff, and I might just, I might even, I might even get it up there slightly to show you an example of it. Um, it's in Aspen this year. Um, uh, yeah, so even there's, I'll have a video there in a second. But so there's like big air contests, like, and the full broadcast are up on YouTube. So like, if you're looking, it doesn't matter. Once you have YouTube, you can watch on your phone or broadcast, broadcast it to your TV and actually make a night of it because they're like 40, 45 minutes long. So they're all there. Uh, myself and Elaine were watching the big air uh, snowboarding there the last night, both the male and females of it. And uh, it's just mind boggling. Like, you know, you're just, these are kind of unknown athletes outside of their, um, outside of their niche. Um, but you can't like just the feet, they're launching themselves into the air and they are doing quad flips. So four flips in wakeboarding to give a comparison the top guys are doing double flips. Um, but like even David O'Keefe, our, our, our kind of local or our national pro, we call him, like he's landing doubles, but like we were there watching him and he struggled. Like, you know, it's it was not an easy feat even for the pros. So then to transfer over to winter and bear in mind, we're landing in water, right? So like these guys are doing quad flips off a massive ramp and landing on a downslope of hard, compacted ice snow. It's just, I guess it's one of those adventures that is, is you know, that that is hard to imagine how you get to that level. I'm sure they're using airbags and indoor, and they're almost more like gymnasts than, than mountain bikers or the normal outdoor enthusiasts. But um, I would just, again, it's one of these ones that I wanted to highlight for lockdown because if you're at home and you've got that kind of, you know, we're all looking for stuff to do, whether it's jigsaws or coloring books or whatever it is. But for me, just kind of like getting the stoke going, getting the buzz going, watching this was really cool. Like, you know, um, I'll quickly, again, if you're on YouTube, I'll quickly share just one, um, one kind of screen of it just to kind of give you like, and there's cool, you can kind of see here, there's cool angles. So there's cool kind of follow views and you can see that so they're following down the slope as they go they're doing their tricks and again it's well commentated so even if you've never done it jump on check it out just have it on in the background and you can kind of you can find yourself you find yourself getting into it like years ago my favorite winter olympic sport was the curling it was so exciting <laughs> watching and who would have thought she, like blocks going down the ice you know what i mean so uh yeah. if, if you're into sport or looking for a bit of escapism and looking for a bit of something to get into of an evening and also a bit of inspiration because like what they're doing is just bonkers yeah no the athleticism is just incredible and it's a i think i think with extreme sports it's fantastic it, it's nearly the like or even with the winter sports it, it's it it's nearly all extreme like i remember watching the winter olympics uh, years ago in russia um forget which one uh, you 
year that was. But I remember sitting down watching on the television being like, holy God, like just what they'd be doing. Like, and it's like, there's so much risk involved in it. Uh, like maybe in comparison to some of the summer Olympics we watch, like a lot, nearly every winter Olympic sport has a huge element of risk in it. Like it's just yeah. incredible to watch. Well, look, I hope uh, I hope we've given a bit of inspiration. And uh, like, I, I, I think that's probably a typical format of how we continue. We'll get better at our uh, at our segments and, and come a bit. So you'll get to know um, the highlights of each one, but covering a bit of outdoor news, um, our opinion on it from being within the outdoor industry and providers and a, and a, and a tourism provider within Ireland. Um, so we definitely will always have a spin on the outdoors from an Irish perspective, even if it is a cabin perspective. I'm not so like, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> the um, Midlands of Ireland. Yeah, Midlands, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, don't know what you'd be thinking up there. Um, so look, that's that's kind of that's kind of the the Adventure Island podcast in, in a bit of a nutshell. I think it, it, it's pretty cool to get into it from our perspective. We're going to be doing this each week. I get I guess Fridays if if we can keep to it. Uh, the day after the newsletter goes out. Um, from a Ballyhas perspective, the Adventure Newsletter, Adventure Hub Newsletter goes out every Thursday, Thursday mornings generally. We'll put up a sign up link into wherever you're watching this. Where where can they, where will they be listening? We're going SoundCloud and the normal podcast areas for, for, for future. Yeah, so we'll be YouTube, SoundCloud um, at start off and any, and any other we add on. If it's ACAS, nice. Spotify, any of those, we'll put the link up on our social media. So just make sure to follow our Instagram, Ballyhas Aqua Parks, Ballyhas Wake Park, and then Ballyhas Mallow and Ballyhas Lee Valley, uh, Ballyhas Culture, Lee Valley Harbour for Facebooks. Um, just any of our social medias, we'll pull them up on all of them. Jesus, so, Paul, if, if we've kept them this long, we're doing well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're braver people than, uh, than we are, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah the last, last plug that I have down, anyway, is like we're actually hosting a webinar um next thursday isn't it for if you're interested in our summer camp product outdoor summer camp product um over both sites in Madeline coach where we'll be hosting a webinar uh where you can come on and join to us myself and paul will be hosting as well uh we'll be interviewing some of the camp leaders going through all the different camp options we have in both sites uh, going through why it's important, what will be on offer, what activities, what they should bring, um, all the uh, all all the dates, how to book, everything you need to know, everything summer camp. So if you're if you have anyone who is of age uh, between six and seventeen, that kind of age, who might you might think would be interested, join in and you get discounts, prizes, all that kind of stuff as well. So we might put a link to that below as well Paul but uh, I think that we should wrap it up there now before we go too long and try and keep it around this this kind of length in in the next couple of weeks and yeah it's good yeah very good anything 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 final following up no that's it I think um in terms of if yeah as well guys if you jo- uh, join the webinar we do have a very exciting product down in Bally this is this is Paul's live sales speak have you heard his to- tone go already <laughs> I guarantee you will not regret it. Um, if you join the webinar, we're going to be releasing a bit more info on it. And uh, we're just generally teasing it out this whole month. So <laughs> do join. You're nice and fun. All right, guys. Thanks a million for tuning in. We will see you for podcast number two. Uh, coming every Friday, hopefully. See you soon. Thanks a million. Great. See you guys. Thanks very much.